everyone, welcome to the course on computer aided drug design. In this class we are going to look at some simple drugs and we are also look, going to look at some databases which gives a large number of structures. They are very useful for preliminary screening of uh, molecules. Um, as I showed you uh, in the first class, these are some of the databases which contain structures of uh, a large number of molecules. Um, the zinc database contains uh, 35 million compound structures with some properties we can buy if you want. Uh, then we have this drug bank and drugs.com. These databases contain structures of drugs that are uh, um, currently available in the market, over the counter drugs, um, FDA approved and so on actually, uh, biotech drugs and so on. So, uh, if I want to know is what is the drug available in the market for a particular disease, the first step is I will go into this uh, drug bank and drugs.com. In addition, we also have the um, chem spider, chem db, uh, pup chem, chem mbl, all these contain structures of large number of molecules searchable um, and contains properties of uh, uh, all of them different types of properties molecular weight solubility and so on actually. So, we will look at some of them uh, in this class. Okay, the most uh, um, well known uh, widely used uh, drug is aspirin okay. it is called acetyl salicylic acid. So, we have this uh, the acid. So, we have this uh, um, salicylic acid this is the acetyl group uh, that is present here okay. this is used for uh, uh, pain, fever, so it is very widely used and nowadays it is even being prescribed for reducing um, the viscosity of the drug, I mean viscosity of the blood. So, it is called a blood thinner. So, uh, aspirin is widely used. Some of the targets for aspirin is uh, prostaglandins, okay, prostaglandin synthase 1, okay, then prostaglandin synthase uh, uh, 2. So, this is called a cyclooxygenase 1 and cyclooxygenase 2. These enzymes are reductase type of en enzymes, okay. this gives you the ligand efficiency um, and these are some properties of uh, this particular molecule. Okay. They are called properties, um, they are called uh, descriptors, structural features. So, we call them different names features, uh, properties, uh, we also call descriptors, we will use this quite often. Uh, descriptors just like uh, if you take a human being um, the properties could be height of the person, weight of the person, color of the skin, color of the hair, color of the eyes, so many different uh, properties we can have. Similarly, uh, for each um, chemical structure we can have large number of properties. We are going to talk about them later, okay, later. but uh, molecular weight is one easy property which uh, you all know about it. Um, it has got two rotatable bonds. So, we will talk about uh, these properties later. Now, let us look at another one metformin. Metformin um, again uh, everybody uh, nowadays know about metformin because uh, uh, diabetics has diabetes has become a serious problem globally as well as uh, quite a lot in India and uh, it is widely used drug for controlling uh, diabetes. Okay. So, this is metformin structure, it has got a lot of uh, nitrogens, okay. so it is highly um, polar, so it is highly hydrophilic. Hydrophilic means um, it is highly water soluble um, as against hydrophobic uh, which is uh, lipid soluble. So, hydrophilic means it is more water soluble, hydrophobic means it is more lipid soluble. Because of the presence of nitrogens, um, it is highly water soluble. Similarly, if you have a lot of uh, OH group, hydroxyl group, it will become highly water soluble. So, this is metformin used for diabetes. Again, a lot of properties of uh, metformin are given uh, um, here. We will spend more time later uh, as we go along. Look at this. These are antibiotics. They are called beta lactam antibiotics. These are broad spectrum antibiotics. Okay. Um, it is highly available in the market. Penicillin one of the oldest antibiotics, it was given um, um, during World War II for soldiers who had infection. Uh, many soldiers before the advent of penicillin used to die because of infection and the penicillin was the biggest boom. Okay. They are called beta lactam antibiotics, there are many uh, beta lactam antibiotics. So, this is called a beta lactam ring. Okay, this is called a beta lactam ring. 
the four members cyclic uh, with a nitrogen and a ketonic group and uh, many antibiotics which come under this class of beta lactam antibiotics will have this particular ring ok. So, we can have different substitutions here I have put R uh, we can have different substitutions here here but this particular ring is kept intact that is called the beta lactam ring four members cyclic with a nitrogen and a ketone. So, this is cephalosporins again uh, you see this uh, ring the beta lactam ring and then here the different types of R groups are put in. So, we get large number of cephalosporins ok. So, they are antibiotics broad spectrum antibiotics um, and there are many many types of beta lactam antibiotics available currently in the market ok. So, that is the beta lactam ring um, ok. So, look at this um, antibiotics amoxicillin. So, it is got this beta lactam ring ok, penicillin 5 it is a oral this one penicillin G. So, this beta lactam ring is intact. So, there are a lot of modifications to the side chains um, to improve its solubility or maybe improve its uh, stability uh, to balance the hydrophilic and hydrophobic nature of the drug. So, many reasons and uh, they add these uh, extra uh, substitutions to improve the drug likeness property or maybe to improve ok. So, this is the general penicillin as you can see here the beta lactam ring is there but uh, there are so many different types of penicillin, penicillin G, penicillin uh, okay, V, amoxicillin, but all of them have this. Okay, so, how do they act? They prevent cross linking between proteins and hence cell wall synthesis. So, uh, the uh, bacteria cell does not grow uh, because they prevent the cross linking of various proteins that are involved in the cell wall development. So, look at this combination of amoxicillin and clavulanic acid ok. So, they again they are used for treatment of bacterial infection ok. What happens is these bacteria became very smart and uh, they started producing something called a beta lactamase enzyme ok. That is called a beta lactamase enzyme enzyme. So, that enzyme produced by the bacteria started breaking uh, this beta lactam thereby the antibiotic becomes uh, uh, ineffective or it loses its activity. Uh, the bacteria started uh, developing this particular enzyme and this enzyme will break uh, uh, this structure. So, the antibiotic loses its uh, activity. So, what happened was uh, they started introducing uh, combination one is called clavulanic acid amoxicillin. So, this clavulanic acid will go and bind to this enzyme beta lactamase um, thereby that enzyme is not able to do any job whereas, this antibiotic uh, will start uh, working and thereby it will kill the bacteria. So, uh, these are this is called a combination therapy ok. This is called a combination therapy where we, we give two drugs um, one drug acts uh, on one target and the another drug um, acts on the other target ok. So, that is called a combination therapy because uh, the, the beta lactamase enzyme started degrading the beta lactam ring uh, they started giving two drugs in combination. So, this particular clavulianic acid will go and bind uh, to the beta lactam enzyme that is a beta lactamase inhibitor whereas, the amoxicillin will start uh, working on the cell wall thereby the bacteria uh, will get killed ok. So, nowadays uh, this bacteria uh, become resistant they are called resistant bacteria because they start doing different tricks. Uh, one approach is to produce these type of enzymes which will go and kill the uh, or destroy or in uh, or degrade the drug that is one approach. Other approach is to uh, produce something called efflux pumps that means, uh, whatever drug comes inside the uh, microorganism or cell is thrown out that is effluxed out ok. So, that is called uh, efflux uh, uh, pumps. So, the bacteria started developing these type of uh, uh, new tricks uh, thereby they become resistant and nowadays you must have been talking uh, hearing about resistance bacteria, resistance tuberculosis bacteria and so on. So, these are the tricks they follow and so uh, drugs are go, uh, given in combination to overcome some of these problems. Um, aspirin ok, we all know aspirin. 
Uh, there are uh, different types of aspirins as you can see, um, phenacetin, then Tylenol. So, all of them have a different type of structural features as you can see here ibuprofen, it is also called Advil. These modifications are done in the structures as I said to improve the drug likeness property or to improve ADME or to make the molecule more stable or uh, reduce toxicity and so on actually. We will look at uh, some of them as we go along. Um, antihistamines, again uh, all of us must have taken antihistamines. Uh, these uh, are taken when to overcome swelling or redness, inflammation, sneezing, runny nose, watery eyes. So, uh, the, how do they act? They block histamine release from histamine 1 receptor. Okay? So, um, they block histamine when it gets released, you end up having swelling, itching, inflammation, runny nose, runny uh, watery eyes and so on actually. So, they are called antihistamines. Okay? They block the histamine release. This is what is called a histamine, this is the structure of the molecule. Uh, that is called histamine. Uh, so, these are some of the antihistamine drugs which are in market diphenyl, hadramine, uh, chlorophenyl, I mean. So, we will see that they have the nitrogen groups here, okay. That is why this ending is amine, okay. So, they have all the nitrogen groups here, that is why it ends with amine. These are all antihistamines used for uh, allergy type of uh, situations. Um, more of antibacterial. Uh, these sulfa drugs were discovered very, very early. Um, they have this uh, sulfur groups, that is why they are called uh, sulfa drugs. So, as you can see here, sulf anil amide. So, they have the NH2. So, there is an amide group here, okay. That is why it is called sulf anil amide, okay. This, this is an aniline type of group. Uh, so, different types of uh, sulfa gonadine, sulfa thiazole. This is called a thiazole structure, a 5 membered ring with nitrogen and sulfur um, is called a thiazole structure uh, because uh, thio means sulfur, ZOLE is nitrogen. Um, when you have thiazole, it means it is a 5 membered uh, nitrogen and sulfur is present. So, you see different types of um, modifications to sulfur. Um, these drugs uh, nowadays are not uh, uh, used much because. Uh, uh, the bacteria have become more resistant to these drugs okay? uh, and um, the whole world has shifted towards different types of antibiotics like I showed you penicillin. Again penicillin also has become uh, um, very meek, bacteria have become resistant to that. So, the um, medical fraternity has moved into much more powerful antibiotics. So, there is always a war between the microorganism and uh, um, scientist. As the scientists discover new drugs, the microorganisms somehow get resistance um, and either through modifi gene modifications or through design of efflux pumps or uh, um, design of new enzymes to degrade the drug. Um, so, again scientists start discovering new molecules and so on actually. So, these are sulfa drugs which are generally not used nowadays, maybe for some of the skin infections it is still being used in ointments. Um, then other antibacterial drugs you can see tetracycline, uh, you must have heard all these names, uh, aromycin, okay, again teramycin, fluoroquinoline. So, these drugs they bind to the bacterial ribosomes whereas, uh, fluoroquinolines bind to the DNA replication. So, the DNA does not get replicated. Okay. So, you can see different uh, type of uh, mode of action of antibiotics, antibacterial drug. If you look at penicillin, they prevent cell wall synthesis. If you look at these type of uh, drugs, tetracyclines, they bind to bacterial ribosome. If you look at fluoroquinolines, they prevent uh, the DNA replication. Okay, so, um, pharma companies look at different uh, 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 possible targets and start designing molecules um, towards those targets. Ibuprofen, okay, this uh, everybody would have. Uh, taken because of inflammation and so on, in the joints, in the knee and so on. So, these are called non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, okay, NSAID. Once upon a time steroids were given if there was swelling in knees or joints, um, but steroids as you know has lot of side effects. So, drugs were discovered, small molecule drugs were discovered 
um, to overcome this inflammation as anti-inflammatory molecule. So, they are called non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug NSAID. So, how does it do? It reduces the hormones that cause inflammation and pain in the body. They go and bind to um, some enzymes which produce prostaglandins, okay, that is how they act. Okay, so, uh, large number of uh, drugs which we use very commonly, I have shown which is very, very important for us to know the structural features. We need to know the structural descriptors which are uh, normally um, describe the molecular properties. So, that is called a chemi informatics um, which chemi informatics which uh, tries to find out the structural features um, or structural descriptors of uh, molecular structure. So, let us look at some databases like I said before um, and see how we can make use of them, okay. Okay, let us uh, first look at this database called Zinc 15 database. Uh, this database uh, contains structures of uh, uh, a large number of molecules as you can see uh, 100 million, it keeps going up every day. Uh, purchasable that means uh, if you think uh, uh, you have found a good possible lead compounds based on uh, in silico you can even buy it okay that is the beauty of it. Now this zinc database how do I go about searching uh, I can do uh, click on this so search for a substance so I can type uh, say for example as print Yeah, so we find a structure, I click on it, uh, so it gives a lot of information. This is the structure, as I said uh, aspirin is nothing but uh, acetyl, this is the acetyl group, uh, this is the salicylic acid, so it is got a benzene and an acid here, um, it is available in stock and so on, okay. The net charge on the molecule is uh, minus 1, uh, why does it get to minus 1? Uh, because uh, the OH can easily dissociate, so you can get a O minus one. It does not have any hydrogen bond uh, donors, okay, because uh, it gets uh, the O and H uh, gets uh, um, okay dissociated as O minus. So hydrogen bond acceptors, that means uh, uh, oxygen and nitrogen are called hydrogen bond acceptors. So one, two, three, four. So it's got four hydrogen bond acceptors. TPSA means total polar surface area, uh, the po PSA means polar surface area, okay. um, polar surface area, it has got two rotatable bonds. So, two rotatable bonds, it has got um, then uh, okay, and so on, so a lot of uh, properties it is giving. Um, and then in addition it tells which enzymes it goes and binds to. Uh, if you click on this it give, uh, we can find out more details about those enzymes, okay. As you can see uh, these are other analogues of uh, this, okay, different uh, okay, analogues of this as you can see here, um, different analogues of aspirin. Um, and then uh, what, what has been done? as any clinical trials been done, uh, the details are given phase 4 clinical trials, antiplatelet therapy. So, as I said aspirin is nowadays being used for thinning of blood, it also used for uh, preventing platelet aggregation, okay. So, uh, so strokes, it is also being given now for strokes also. Um, so, phase 4 clinical trials have been done, so it is in the market for treatment of uh, um, blood thinning as well as for stroke. It is um, warfarin or aspirin is being looked at it, this term completed. Uh, like that you know what are the clinical trials that are being done with the aspirin, what is the current status uh, 2005, 2006, 11, 7, 11. Uh, so, those details are also given on this and so good amount of information is given about this particular molecule, um, okay. So, um, if we are uh, interested to buy aspirin, we can always get it here, we can write to them and also get uh, these information. Um, okay, let us look at uh, another structure, uh, metformin for example, uh, metformin.
Well, you have metformin here. Um, so, if we click on that, okay. So, uh, this is metformin. Um, again, lot of uh, properties of metformin. Uh, net charge is uh, two because uh, see you can see plus charges are there. Uh, so, it is two hydrogen bond donors, it is got one, two, three, four. So, four uh, nitrogen groups which are hydrogen bond donors, there is no acceptors, um, okay. And a uh, lot of information about it is being given metformin and rostaglison, uh, this is also another anti diabetes drug, okay, for treatment. So, some clinical trials details are being given here, okay, and then um, it is. Uh, some of the properties of this molecule and then what type of studies are being done in clinical trials. So, all these are given. So, if I, I can click get more information on this, okay, yeah, so I can get more. In. So, um, this is a very useful database, um, okay. In addition, we can do lot of things here. Uh, we can draw structures here, for example, uh, Imagine I am drawing a structure um, um, here. Okay, I can um, draw a chemical structure, and then um, okay. Okay, so I I am interested to uh, look at molecules in the database which has got this substructure. So I can say um, substructure search. So, I can uh, um, draw different substructures here and search this database to find out whether there are any uh, main structure with this type of substructure present. So, because this is a very common thing, it is searching and searching, it will take a long time. Um, but if I have a big substructure um, and then ask it to search, I can do that. So, I can draw uh, different structures using uh, this particular uh, template. You know, I can draw uh, benzene rings, five membered rings, heterocycles, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur, uh, different uh, as you can see chlorine, bromine, um, like that I can um, draw. If I know the name, of course, I can give the name. Um, if I know, oh, look at this. So, it is found so many uh, molecules in the database which has this particular substructure. As you can see, this benzene ring with the O. Uh, that is what I wanted, right. So, it is found few, huge number of uh, substructures, um, huge number of uh, molecules with this particular uh, substructure, okay. Um, I can take it further um, and do some studies uh, or I can look at a much more uh, um, stringent filter and try to reduce them. As you can see here, a large number of molecules have this particular substructure, the benzene ring, there is an oxygen, there is a in the in the para position, there is a, a substitution groups as you can see more and more molecules are coming up. Uh, imagine I just uh, click on one of these, yeah, so more molecules are there. Imagine I just click on this particular um, molecule, okay. So, it gives you the details of this molecule, okay. This is the molecule here. Um, Okay. And this is the zinc ID of that molecule and then uh, some properties you can find here log P, we will talk about all these molecular weight is given here. We can buy this uh, molecule from them if we think uh, it is very, uh, okay. not much information about this molecule is there. Um, so, okay, that is called a substructure search. Okay. So, the beauty is uh, we can do that sort of search. Okay. In addition, there is another search um, which or if you know the zinc ID, that means this is called a zinc database. So, if you know the ID, we can do that also. Okay. So, uh, you can draw the structure, that is the beauty of it. Now, let us look at uh, uh, drug DB. Okay, so, there is uh, this drug bank which contains large number of uh, uh, drugs that are currently in the market. So, it contains 10,508 drug entries that means these are approved by FDA and they are in the market including 
1738 small molecule drugs, so many biotech drugs, okay. So, all these are there. So, we are, now we can uh, start searching this also, uh, for example, uh, okay, uh, this is a drug of month, drug bank top drugs, astominophen, this is used for aches, pains, acetyl salicylic acid, metformin, I talked about. Uh, aspirin I talked about, morphine, morphine is a drug uh, used for severe pain, it prevents, uh, it reduces the pain which you have, okay. So, uh, this is a very useful database um, we can use for uh, our study and you want to identify some new drugs, okay. So, we can say again metformin, okay. So, we can search for metformin. Uh, metformin is a bioguanide, uh, so okay, it gives you all the details about uh, this particular drug, okay. So, look at drugs currently, uh, let me for, okay. okay, so I typed something called beta blocker. Um, this uh, set of uh, drugs are given uh, for cardiovascular uh, problems, especially at high uh, blood pressure. There are certain uh, beta adrenergic receptors which are uh, blocked by these type of drugs. So, large number of drugs, uh, they all end up with this particular title, bupranolol, indenolol. So, all these drugs come under this uh, category of uh, beta blocker. They are, this is non-selective beta blocker. So, normally this is uh, given uh, for high blood pressure. For example, uh, let me click on one of them, okay. So, it gives the structure of this molecule um, and then uh, approved, it is a beta blocker, okay. And then um, international other brand names because companies sell it as brand names, okay. What is the molecular weight, chemical formula? Um, then pharmacolog pharmacological details, okay, what is the pharmacodynamics um, and how it acts, how does it bind to uh, and so on actually. So, a lot of information, uh, of course, details about uh, drug interaction, how it is interacting with other drugs because uh, nowadays doctors may prescribe two, three drugs. So, how do they interact with other drugs um, and so on. Then clinical trial details then some experimental properties, melting point, water solubility and then these are predicted property, these are experimental, these are predicted properties, solubility, okay, pKa that is uh, dissociation, acidic uh, and so on actually, okay. Lot of information is being given, number of rings, bioavailability is a very important parameter. It tells you uh, when I take a drug orally, how much is actually available at the target site, okay. Uh, and so on actually. So, it gives lot of information. Then uh, as you can see predicted, this is that means uh, computationally predicted ADME properties, adsorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion, T, T is toxicity. So, it gives you information about uh, uh, using software, I think they predict lot of properties. As you can see different types of properties are being predicted and they are all given in this. So, if I want to do some analysis studies, these type of information is very, very useful. So, drug DB is uh, another useful database. Uh, then we also have, uh, as I said, uh, another database uh, that is the drugs.com, okay. So, let us look at that also. Okay, it gives you a lot of information about uh, different types of drugs that are currently in FDA approved. Okay, so, we can do a drug index based on condition, class, uh, generic drugs, over the counter drugs, international drugs, natural products, veterinary products, drug side effects. Okay. Um, so, if I am going to start uh, a research on a particular disease, the first thing I will do is look at drug db and drugs.com. So, all, I will know all about currently existing uh, molecules. Um, so, I can know their properties, I can know their uh, mode of action, I will know uh, how they act, what are the side effects. So, that is a very good step to start from, okay. So, you need to 
uh, start from that particular step. Okay, so other databases let us look at uh, drugs.com and so you also have this chemdb that is another database. Okay, so uh, chemdb is a chemical databases online. Okay, so you can see this is a chemistry databases reference. Uh, we can search by structure. So, I give the structure and then uh, we can look at uh, different types of structures and then uh, we can start looking at, okay. So, this is a bio screening. So, it gives um, we can start looking at structure search. Then uh, we also have uh, the uh, PubChem database which gives you information on uh, various types of uh, is called a PubChem database. Again, this has got a large number of uh, uh, structure searchable options. Um, we can give a property searchable options, three dimensional structure searchable options and so on. So, we can see compound uh, as aspirin, yeah. So, different types of aspirin we can search. So, look at this, it gives you a lot of information, um, it gives you the IUPAC name uh, that sort of uh, things or we can, if I want to know some bioassays, how do I, uh, okay. So, it tells you some assay for aspirin, various types of assays for aspirin, either to detect aspirin or look at in, uh, assays for its interaction with the different targets. So, that sort of chemist, uh, biochemistry related uh, uh, information uh, we can do. Again, this also has a structure search option. Uh, so, we can draw the structure, okay. Uh, search, the substructure, structure, okay. So, we can draw structures here as you can see here, okay lot of things can be done. Yeah, so I can do lot of things with this, okay. So, so we can look at this and then we can say, okay, draw a structure, read search, search. Yeah, it is waiting query, yeah, so it is doing something. So, it will look at uh, substructure search for uh, molecules with that particular substructure. Um, so, this is called a PubChem database. Okay, so um, you, you people can uh, start uh, playing with all these uh, types of uh, different databases available. Um, in uh, in the web, okay, all these are very useful databases because it gives you structures um, and a uh, lot of properties which you can make use of uh, for doing different types of uh, calculation. So I, uh, because we will not have enough time to go through each one of the database in detail, uh, I would suggest that you people go through all these databases. We can look at it based on the name of the molecule or the drug. Uh, we can draw structures and also uh, we can do a substructure search and uh, um, we can do based on properties, we can uh, do search based on uh, disease conditions, okay. So, a lot of uh, studies, um, data collection and data analysis can be done with these type of uh, databases and we will be using some of these databases as we go along, okay. Thank you very much for your time.